This video will show you how to install and configure a Kinetics 5300 servo drive. It will be a basic walkthrough to guide you through the initial setup steps to get the drive moving. The first step is to add the drive. Since it's an Ethernet drive, it needs to be added under Ethernet. I'm working offline because drives cannot be added while online. To add the drive, create a new module. The drive I'm working with today is a Kinetics 5300 model 2198-C1004ERS. So I'll select that model and create the drive. It's very important to check the revision of your hardware. This can be done using factory talk links or RS links, but I already know my revision is 13.001. My drive is a single phase drive, so I'll select single phase. The only other settings I need to change are naming the drive and assigning it an IP address. For this demo, I'll use the IP address 27. Once that's done, close the window. Next, we need to create a motion group. I'll create a new motion group and name it motion group. After that, we'll create a new axis. This will be a CIP, Common Industrial Protocol, Drive Axis. I'll keep it simple and name it Axis. Now let's go into the Axis properties to configure a few settings. The first step is to assign the drive to the Axis. Once that's set, we can configure the motor by selecting its catalog number. The motor I'm using today is the MPL A230P-V, so I'll select that from the list. Next, under scaling, since I'm working with a direct rotary coupling and nothing attached to the motor, I'll set the scaling to 360 degrees per revolution. Apply the settings and everything should be good to go. That's all the steps needed to set up the motor. Now we can download the program and proceed to the final steps online. To download, make sure your project path is set. Go to offline and select download. Proceed to download the program. After the download, change the mode back to run. The first thing you might notice is an IO not responding message. If you check the error message, it indicates that there is no CTS master detected. To fix this, we need to ensure that time synchronization is enabled as servo drives require a time synchronization master. In this case, we'll make the PLC the time master. This is done under date and time by checking the box to enable time synchronization. That should resolve the error. Now you should see that the servo drive is connected without error, and if we check the axis, there are no faults. Next, I'll show you how to use motion direct commands. Right click on the axis and select motion direct commands. This brings up a list of possible commands you can execute. The first command to run is motion servo on. After executing it, you should hear the servo drive humming. The next command we'll look at is motion axis move. This command offers several options. For this demo, we'll choose an absolute move and set the position to 360 degrees for a full revolution. I prefer setting the speeds as a percentage of the maximum, so I'll set everything in percentage terms and adjust the acceleration and deceleration rates to around 1% with the speed at 30%. Press execute and the servo will move accordingly. This is how you get your servo drive moving. There are many other commands available here, all of which are also accessible as instructions in the PLC. If your servo drive ever faults, you'll need to use the motion axis shutdown reset command. This command will shut down and reset the servo drive. After running this command, you'll need to run motion servo on again. If you want to turn off your servo, you can use the motion servo off command, which will power it down. Now, let's take a look at some logic. I'll start in the main routine for now. Motion instructions execute every time they are pulsed. So in this rung, I'll add an examine if open instruction followed by a motion instruction. All the motion instructions are listed under motion. We'll use the motion axis move that we explored earlier in the motion direct commands to build the motion logic. First, I need to assign an axis. The only one available is the one I named axis. Next, it requires a motion control element, which is a built-in predefined data type. I'll declare it here and name it something simple like axis mam. When created, it becomes a motion instruction data type. Note that each motion command must have a unique motion instruction data element. Now I need to specify the move type. If you have questions about the move types, you can check the instruction help for details. The options include absolute, incremental, rotary short, and others each represented by a number. We'll use an absolute move, which is zero. 
It's a good practice to declare this as a variable. So I'll create a variable called move move type. We'll do the same for position, ensuring it is set as a real data type. The same applies to speed, which I'll also declare as a real. Next, I'll add a Boolean variable called go, which will be used for activation. For speed units, I'll select percentage of maximum. And for the acceleration rate, I'll declare another real variable named AD rate, which I'll use for both acceleration and deceleration. For this example, I'll set the motion profile to trapezoidal and the jerk settings will be 0.1 for both. I'll leave the merge option set to disabled and all other remaining values at zero. In a real application, all of these settings should be configured according to your specific requirements. Everything is set, I'll finalize the rung. Now I need to turn on my servo, so I'll run a motion direct command with motion servo on. For the move type, I'll set it to an absolute move, zero, with a position of 720 degrees for two full revolutions at 10% of maximum speed. When I toggle go, the servo drive will move. If I change the move type to incremental and toggle it again, the servo will rotate 720 degrees or two full revolutions each time. That's how you program logic for this setup. Another useful addition could be a motion servo on or a motion axis shutdown reset command, but I'll let you explore that on your own.